Beast. A group of poachers make their way through a forest in the middle of the night as they try to hunt down a pride of lions feasting on their prey. After a brief shootout, one of the wildcats is taken down. So the hunters haul her away, and then they lay a trap for another lion. However, as they're leaving, one of the hunters finds his colleague dead, so he tries to flee the scene. Unfortunately for him, he falls into the trap he had set for the lion, and is left hanging upside down. Suddenly, the beast leaps out of the shadows and attacks him. Now, a widowed doctor, Nate Samuels, has a troubling vision of his wife, and is woken up by the pilot, after which we see him with his daughters Nora and Meredith. The family is visiting the Mopani Reserve in South Africa, which is the place where Nate's wife had grown up. The girls create a fuss, but Nate calms them down after which they meet his buddy, Martin Battles, who is a wildlife biologist. He acts as the family's guide and takes them to his bachelor pad since he has broken up with his girlfriend. Meredith and Nora get upset when they learn that there's no Wi-Fi or cellular data coverage over here, but their worries are quickly blown away when they enjoy the beauty of nature. Then, Martin shows them some amazing photographs of their mother, and the girls are immediately captivated. However, this makes them realize that their dad hasn't showed them any pictures of their mom, and it causes Meredith to confront Nate about his negligence as a father and a husband. Things get ugly when he says that Nate had left his wife to die, and this leads them to have an argument. Their confrontation upsets Nora, so she leaves the scene, and Meredith goes to console her after realizing her mistake. The men decide to put the drama behind them and share a drink with each other later in the night. Here, Nate asks Martin why he didn't come for his wife's funeral, and he says that he didn't want to see her in a concrete casket. Now, Nate feels guilty for neglecting his family. More importantly, his wife's cancer, but Martin tries to cheer him up. Regardless, Nate cannot shake the dreadful feeling and laments that he's going to lose the girls if they keep growing distant from him. The men get drunk and have to deal with their hangover the next day as they take the girls out for a wildlife adventure. They explore the beautiful scenery of the jungle and check out some of the wild animals as well. Then they meet Martin's colleague, Banji, who usually observes wildcats. There's a pride of lions right next to the team, so Banji reassures the girls that it's safe as they have just eaten a meal. Despite this, he loads himself with a tranquilizer gun for safety, and then Martin plays with the lions as he's raised them since they were cubs. However, he notices an injured lioness who acts violent towards him, so he walks away and tells Banji about it. They figure that this is the work of poachers, and explain to the family that the lions are being hunted for their teeth and bones. Now, they go to visit a local tribe, and cross an abandoned vehicle with vultures feasting on the leftovers. The team reaches the tribe's village, but don't find anyone there. As they explore the area, Martin and Nate come across a pile of dead bodies, so they ask the girls to go into the car immediately. However, Nora gets lost so a tense sequence follows where Nate searches for his daughter. He eventually finds her, but Nora is terrified because there's a dead girl right in front of her. Martin figures that this has to be because of the lions, but it doesn't make any sense as the wildcats are not known to be so aggressive towards humans. The team decides to go back to a safer place, but as they try to radio for support, they suddenly run into a survivor from the lion attack. As they tend to him, the predator roars from nearby, so Martin goes to check it out. Meanwhile, Nate tries to save the injured victim and asks the girls to radio for help, but the man eventually passes away. Now, a tense sequence follows as Martin explores the jungle, and then he is suddenly attacked by a bloodthirsty lion. Nate hears the gunshot and goes to check it out, but he notices the lion charging at him. He rushes back into the car and makes it inside just before the lion smashes the window. However, the beast goes to the other side and gets a hold of Nate's leg, injuring him in the process. Tensions run high, but Meredith luckily manages to start the car and drive away from the lion. Unfortunately, she isn't able to control the steering wheel, so the car crashes next to the edge of a cliff and is unable to restart. The family is in the middle of nowhere, and the girls start to panic, but then Martin radios them. He reveals that he is badly wounded, so Nate tries to help him with the injury by instructing him on how to dress his wound with a hot knife. 
Martin lets out a scream when he places the knife on his injury, and Nate is able to hear him, so he figures that he's somewhere close. He decides to look for his friend, but then Martin notices the lion staring at him, and realizes that he's being used as bait for the family. He asks Nate and the girls to leave him, but they refuse to do so, and Nate equips himself with the tranquilizer gun. He gets out of the car even though his leg is injured, and he tries to locate Martin's location while also looking out for the lion. Martin tries to help by directing the family to a landmark, but Meredith inexplicably gets out of the car when she spots it. The lion uses this opportunity to attack Nate, and an intense struggle follows. Nate is able to keep himself safe under the car while Meredith goes to Martin and brings him back. As the struggle continues, Nora manages to land one of the tranquilizer darts on the lion and gets him subdued. This allows Nate to get back on his feet, and then Meredith arrives with Martin. Now that the team is together again, the family manages to patch up Martin with some alcohol and dressing, but they are still stranded and the lion comes back to his senses, even though the tranquilizer should have kept him down for hours. Meredith makes things very difficult for Nate when he tries to keep the girl calm, so an argument follows. Luckily, Nate manages to keep the situation calm, after which he discusses the line with Martin. They realize that he is trying to fight the humans as the poachers have made him aggressive towards them. This explains why he's not eating his victims, but the men are still shocked that the predator can think this way. At night, Nate has a nightmare where he sees the lion killing his daughters, and then he has a vision of his wife after which he wakes up. The conflicted father talks to Meredith about her mother and reassures her that he gave everything he had in the relationship. Now, they hear the radio and find a car nearby, but it turns out to be a bunch of poachers led by a man named Keyes. Nate tries to negotiate a deal with them by offering $5,000 to get them away from here but things turn sour when Key spots Martin in the car, who is an anti-poacher. The situation grows worse as the poachers threaten the family, but then the lion attacks the hunters to add further tension. An intense shootout follows, and Nate tries to start the poacher truck, but the keys are missing, so he has to get them from the driver. The girls don't like this idea, but Nate leaves after locking them inside the car. He finds Keys laying dead on the ground, and then comes across the lion. Nate tries to hide from him, but the girls radio their dad and the beast is alerted. Luckily, Nate hides on top of a tree and throws a snake on the wildcat to distract him. Meanwhile, one of the injured poachers scares the girls and dies in front of them. They honk the car hoping to alert their dad and it distracts the lion so he moves towards the noise. This allows Nate to equip himself with a gun and he also finds the keys when he comes across the dead driver. Unfortunately, the lion attacks the girls and injures Meredith, so Martin holds on to him to let the others escape. An intense struggle follows, and it eventually leads to the car crashing after it falls off the ledge. The lion wakes up and is about to attack Martin, so he is left with no other choice but to light the car on fire by using the leaking petrol. Nate notices the explosion and rushes to the scene where he finds injured Meredith. He is saddened to realize that his friend is dead, but focuses on fixing his daughter's wounds, and then the family makes their escape in the poacher truck. However, they run out of fuel on their way, so they have to seek shelter inside a poacher base camp. Nate carries Meredith to the house and dresses her wound with a self-help kit. Nora is shocked to see all the animal bones at the base, and then Nate manages to find some alcohol that he uses to clean the injury. After fixing up his daughter, Nate goes to look for her phone, but he doesn't notice the lion who had managed to survive the explosion. The beast enters the base from behind, and the girls panic upon seeing him. They try to hide as the wildcat explores the area, but they are caught, so they call out to Nate. He rushes to the scene and shoots at the beast to scare him away, after which he takes the girls to a secure spot. Realizing that the killer cat will not stop, Nate decides to fight the lion one-on-one. He lures his enemy away from the girls, after which we witness a fierce battle between man and beast. Nate is easily overpowered, and it's not looking good for him. But then, the other lions come to his rescue, and kill the murderous predator in an epic fight. Nate passes out and sees another vision of his wife, after which he wakes up in the hospital next to his daughters. The girls reveal that Banji had found them and taken them to safety so our hero can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Later, 
the family takes a photo together to mark a new chapter in their lives. And that's the end of the movie. Like, share, and subscribe if you want more Creature Recaps. Hit the bell icon for regular notifications as well. Okay then, I'll see you in the next one.